Ever since I implemented the three brain hacks I'll present in this video, coding has become 10 times easier. It saved me time, made my code less error prone, and even improved my mental health. The brain hacks I'll show you are fast to learn and easy to implement, so make sure you pay attention and start doing all of them after watching this video. If you implement just one, you'll become a better programmer, but if you implement all three, you'll become God himself. Even though I've been programming in some way for over a decade, I'd still often feel like writing code was a daunting task. Getting started would always feel overwhelming, sometimes impossible, and having to learn new things all the time seemed consistently scary. This was all caused by, as it turns out, me not breaking down big problems into smaller problems. Let's use an example I recently had to deal with, implementing an automatic update checking feature for a range of desktop apps, so if there's a new version available, it would ask the user to update their client. I know it's not rocket science, so don't bully me in the comments, but it did feel pretty daunting at the time. But here's where it gets exciting. Instead of just chaotically writing code like I'd normally do, I decided to try something different. I tried breaking the problem down into multiple steps. I asked myself, what does this feature actually require? First, it needs us to store and read the current version of the app somewhere. Next, we have to figure out the latest version of the app. This would be done through a server, which would require a new API to support that. Afterwards, we'll ask the server for the latest version. And then finally, if there's a mismatch, prompt the user to update their client. After having done this planning and thinking step, it was easy for me to crack on with coding, completing one step at a time like a robot. Breaking big problems down into multiple smaller problems with a checklist approach has saved me time, made me more organized, and reduced my chance of making mistakes. And there's a strong sense of dopamine every time I mark a feature as complete. I've been practicing this for a while now, and it doesn't have to be so complicated. I just use a piece of paper or the notepad app. But there's another level to this approach called pseudocode. Pseudocode is writing the solution to a coding problem in plain English without worrying about syntax or the constraints of the current environment. If you're anything like me and often rush to write code, only to realize later that you didn't even understand the problem and have to start over again, then this is for you. Let's use the very last step of the client update check as an example to demonstrate this. When comparing versions, we need to figure out if we're on the latest one or not. And the versions are a combination of letters and digits, such as A2 or BA55. And the higher the letter, the newer the version. And if the letter is the same, then the higher number is the newer version. The letters signified major releases and the numbers minor ones. So a simple string comparison would work in this case. If new version is bigger than old version, then our client is outdated and we'll have to prompt the user to update. That's how pseudocode works. And the point of it is to stop and think for a second just before rushing on to the next thing. So what we really did here was thinking about the problem and then typing out the solution in plain English. At this step, we're not concerned with programming syntax or the boundaries of our program. All we need to do is think of a possible solution. And once we've done that, we can translate the plain English solution into whatever programming language we're working with for the day. But here's the latest, most effective and most shocking brain hack I I've implemented recently. This one may surprise you, but stick around because it will be worth it. Both you and I take regular breaks during coding. That's nothing new. But what do we actually use the break time for? I'll be honest and admit that I'd always use it to hyperstimulate myself using my phone, scrolling and engaging my brain with different apps. And you might be doing the same. It's no secret that no one feels like doing anything after doom scrolling because it blows out our dopamine. And so it turns out that in my case, if I swap my phone time for just being bored by setting a timer for three to five minutes, turning all screens off and just existing for a while, my brain relaxes, dopamine levels become more normal, and I start feeling a burning desire to code again. And it's not like I really miss out on anything important. I've been trying this in my daily life outside of coding too, and it's made me genuinely appreciate life more. Things like socializing and walking in nature are more desirable and actually enjoyable if I've not been hyperstimulating myself on my phone all day. It's honestly hard, but extremely effective. So if you can take only one thing away from the videos you watched today, then let it be this, try being bored sometimes. Check out my Python course link below, click subscribe if you watched this far, and then watch the on-screen video right now. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.